Hey guys, welcome to my 2017 Christmas home tour. This year we mixed up things a little bit because last year I had a completely different configuration. We had a great time putting things together. We went for a vintage farmhouse red and green kind of theme. Basically anything I like, I decorate with. So for the front porch, we kept it kind of simple. I added some white dry brushing to my bench, potted a pine tree, and added some cute little vintage skates that I had lying around. On this side of my porch, this chair I've had for a long time and it was painted like a turquoise color, but I realized that my front porch was kind of drab and needed some color. A quick way to do that is just to add some paint. So this is DIY paint and marquee, and then I just sealed it with some outdoor sealer and it's good to go. I did a little distressing so it looks weathered. And this is my milk can with some logs and some leftover greenery. So I'm sure by the end of this video you're going to realize that I'm kind of wreath obsessed. I'm not really sure how many I have all total. But the very first wreath that we have, this is just from Costco. It comes with the pine cones and the berries on it. But it was kind of drab against my gray door. So I've got this welcome which is from Brooke at Start at Home and I painted it in DIY paint in marquee and then just sealed it and then I used wire to attach it and I just painted the wire to match the letters so that way it doesn't stand out. My Merry Christmas sign I didn't make. I got it pre-made at a local import store here in Utah called Taipan Trading. I like the tinsel and it's kind of vintage inspired so it matches the rest of my house. Up here if you've watched a few of my videos we have our Goodwill shelf and my chippy backdrop that we made and I like to change it out for the different seasons. I've got my poinsettias and pots from Ikea. This is my vintage Mr. and Mrs. Claus collection. These are actually candles over here. Then just a boxwood wreath that I picked up over at Trader Joe's. And then a joy that I put inside there that I also got from Burke at Start at Home. You should check out startathome.com for all of her cutout words. And then some extra bottle brushes we had left over from some Christmas scenes that we did, which we'll show you in a little bit. In our entryway, we have this bench that Zeb made me for my anniversary. I always like to switch out the pillows. I've got these red and white ticking stripes that I use for a lot of different seasons. And then I added this pillow that I made last year with a nativity on it. I'll have Zeb include the link. It's just drop claws and chalk paint and then a stencil. Really simple, but adds a little bit of Christmas to my entry. I told you I was kind of wreath obsessed. So I already showed you two wreaths. This is actually three, and then there's one inside, four, and then five. I have lots of doors and windows, and so I like to use them as backdrops for wreaths and just add character and charm. And I didn't make any of these, they're all store-bought, but they kind of have my green and white and red theme going on, so they work. So when we decided to redecorate the living room, we basically lost all of our flat surfaces because we need more room for staging furniture and painting furniture. So on top of my big green cabinet that holds all my stuff, I have my nativity. It serves two purposes. Jack can no longer break them and take off their heads and limbs by knocking them around, and it's a great place to display it. One of my very most favorite new pieces is this giant hoop wreath. I kind of consider doing like a bunch of different hoop wreaths, but I'm more of a one big impact, especially since I have this big wall and this giant window. I decided to make one. The problem is I couldn't find an embroidery hoop that large. So Zeb actually just took his table saw and cut a strip of cherry wood into a 1 8 inch strip and then bent it and just used twine and just tied it. You want to be careful not to snap it. So we just bent it kind of into submission and then tied it. The twine that we tied it with is kind of hiding under here. And then what, this part here was really simple. If you go to like your local craft store, you can get picks that have like um, all the stuff together. So this is just three different picks from, I think we got, got these at Michael's? Yeah. Black Friday, we got them at Michael's. Three different picks, so we just put them on there and then tied them on. Instead of adding each thing individually, it was really simple. I think the whole thing, including tying the stars with hemp string, took how long? Is that like 20 minutes? Yeah, not not much longer than that. It took like three seconds to cut the, that the piece hard, of wood. Yeah, I was gonna say probably the hardest part was like tying the stuff on. That took a few minutes, but yeah, 20 minutes. And then these stars are just from Taipan, which is like a local import store here in Utah. If you're in Utah and you wanna recreate this, I have like five of those for sale in my booth at Molly's Forget-Me-Not. But you could replicate it with anything and you really don't even need the stars. I just wanted to add a little bit of fun. Just to show you how giant this is, I'm just using myself as proportion. This is 41 inches across. The only way we were gonna get this hoop was to have Zeb cut that eighth inch strip of wood and then bend it because I really, I couldn't find it anywhere else. And it was cheap, it was just wood we had lying around. Coming into my living room, which you can see as you, like a straight shot from the front door, 
I've got my vintage laundry cart. If you can't source an actual vintage laundry cart, you can pick, I think Pottery Barn has a replica. This is a um, vintage wool blanket that I also have in here. And then just a few different pillows that kind of match my striped Christmas decor. The nice thing about it is when company comes, sometimes I just pile all the pillows into here. That way people can actually sit on the couch. I mean, I think a couch is for pillows, but sometimes people like to sit in them. Sorry, this shot's kind of bright. We couldn't adjust the lighting, but I wanted to show you that we've got, and on the window ledge, we have the chicken feeder. It's just got a garland with some ribbon and berries. And if I have it open all the way, you can, it just adds a little bit of decorative flair behind the couch. We also added these red curtains from Ikea. If you watched my Ikea haul, then you saw those. Then we've got this um, blankets from Ikea. These pillows are from Kia, Ikea, and so is this. These are from Ikea, but they weren't pillows. If you watch my Christmas Ikea haul, they were actually just like a big long cushion for like a chaise lounge. And I really liked the fabric and I needed the foam for a project. So I took the foam out, used it for a project, and then I sewed these pillows so that way I could have them on my couch. And I love the velvet fabric. So coming into the kitchen island, I have my Pioneer Woman cake plates in a large and a medium. And Zeb actually made these really cute Christmas diorama kind of snow globe scenes. We bought all the supplies for this one at Michael's and then this is a Norman Rockwell miniature house that my sister got me a long time ago and then we just added those cute little foam balls I don't know the thing is about these balls is they get everywhere so be prepared if you create a snow globe scene like this that they will stick to it styrofoam will be stuck everywhere but it looks really cute when it's all done so this wreath is above the big pantry it's actually there year round I never take it down because I like it but it is an extra wreath so I think what's our count we got one two, three, four, five, this is our sixth wreath. If you count that big one, it's number oh, seven. Oh, seven, yeah. So this is our seventh wreath. And I like boxwood, I leave it up all around. And I actually added a few more that I'm gonna show you in a minute that I probably will leave up after the holidays. In my kitchen, we use this kitchen to actually cook in for our family of seven. So decorating down low on the main surface areas other than on the island really is impractical. So I do most of my decorating up top. And I don't like to take down my regular decor. I just leave what's, I leave up there all the time and then I kind of decorate to match. So on the top of my kitchen cabinets, I've got a buffalo check Christmas tree that I made last year. And then we've got a bunch of like chippy shiplap that I just took a big word cut out that says Noel. And I actually don't remember where I got that from, but I glued that on there. Coming around, we've got another boxwood wreath. And then on the other side, oops, on the other side, I've got another boxwood wreath. So there's one on each side, it kind of balances it out. And then we've got Santa Claus hanging out by my biggest crock above my small pantry. So our dining room is right next to our kitchen and our living room is kind of like one big open space. So all of my decorating kind of has to be cohesive. So I just added some more of the live greenery from Costco and some more of the berries, which match what I've got on my banister that is kind of across from here. And then if you come down to the table, I added a few different things. Last year I did logs and greenery, and this year I just left my lamb's ear in here from the Thanksgiving holiday. I left my pine cones, I added some berries, we've got some logs, and then this is actual Texas cotton. I've got a big box in the garage, and I think it kind of looks like snow. So I just threw some cotton in there, good to go. So we don't have a fireplace, so on our board and batten, which is kind of like a faux mantle, we just hang 3M hooks, and these are my homemade stockings that I just made from felt, ticking, stripe, and pom-poms. If you want to know a quick and simple way of how to make pom-poms, I've got a video on it, and that's also how I made this garland that's up here. Zeb's actually going to compile all of our Christmas videos and crafts and put it into one playlist for you and stick the link below, so that way if you watch one link, you can get how I made everything that we've gotten here if it's something I did a video on. If it's not and you've got questions, comment below and I'll answer as much as I can and let you know. And last but not least, our Christmas tree. This year I went with a completely new Christmas tree. Our Christmas tree from last year, we've had it probably, what, like 10 years ago? Yeah, it was old. It was old. All the, it was pre-lit, but all the lights didn't work, so we cut them off because we were kind of ghetto like that and then strung every strand that we owned on there. And then we had to wire it back because it like flopped over. So I decided this year that I would splurge and I spent $49 at Walmart for this Slim Tree pre-lit, seven foot tall. Without anything on it, it wasn't super impressive, but I knew that I would put all these ornaments on there and you wouldn't see much of the tree anyways. I opted out of a tree skirt this year or a Christmas tree box and Zeb actually used our number five crock, which obviously the base of my Christmas tree was bigger than the crock, so Zeb just cut down the base to fit exactly inside the crock. 
The Christmas tree will never be able to stand without the crock, but for $49, I was happy to amend it, and I'll probably keep it this way until I switch out to a different tree. So our old Christmas tree topper was too heavy, so we used clothes pins and made this. It's a video, it's the last video we just did. We just painted it, distressed it, and made it look all farmhousey. It was super quick and easy. You can use that as a tree topper, or you can make a bunch of them and just use them as ornaments on your tree. So on my tree, you're gonna see berry picks that I put in. I've got these shatterproof Christmas balls. I've got these ribbon balls. You can make them. I bought them at Pottery Barn a long, long time ago. We've got some of our um, family ornaments. If you look through, I've got Zeb and I's first Christmas, and then the kids. I think they're around the side. I don't know. You'll have to find them. We've got the kids' ornaments from their birth year. In fact, we don't have Jax yet. He's only three. We'll get it eventually. Um, and then we added this ribbon. We did three ribbons that come all the way down the tree. And I had Zeb do it because he's actually better at making things symmetrical. And he did a pretty good job. Uh, much better than I would have done. And then we've got this felt garland that comes across here that I bought pre-made from Taipan Trading. I think the last thing I added on was this banner. It says Believe. And it's just baker's twine and then it, it's got stenciled letters on here on top of the burlap and then I've got decorative ribbon kind of on each side. So a $49 Walmart tree doesn't come with a lot of light so I actually added my own from last year. I really like the, having these little twinkle lights but then also adding the big round bulbs is really fun. So we've got what three strands or two, two strands of these on here and it was enough for the whole tree. If you've got a bigger tree, you would probably need at least four strands of these, but because it's so skinny, two works. The thing about this Christmas tree is I don't think you need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have a beautiful tree. I think it's all about taking what you have and turning it into something beautiful. This tree, I only bought new, these picks and this ribbon, everything else I had. And over the years, I've just kind of gravitated towards things that I liked. And the nice thing about going from a big tree to the skinny tree was that I was able to take my very favorite things and just use those and then not use the things I didn't like as much. And it didn't take a lot to fill up this whole tree. I did have to decorate all the way around though, just because you can see all the way around. So that's something to keep in mind with a skinny tree. Thanks for joining me on my home tour today. I hope it inspires you to take the things that you have and create a home that you love. I really want to give a shout out to Zeb because believe it or not, my big burly husband is a really big help when it comes to decorating. In fact, I held off on a lot of these crafts until I had him here because I can be like, hey, I want to do this. And he's the one that's like, oh, well, this is how you figure it out. I know what I want to decorate and he puts it kind of in place. All right, so whether it's your husband or your girlfriend or your mom, when you're decorating, if you're not sure about how to do things, just get somebody to help you figure it all out. And then maybe you can help them decorate and it makes it a lot more fun. Be sure to click below and look for all the links for the playlist to our past Christmas tours and videos and DIY crafts. As always, give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe and the little bell over there so that way you get notifications for our videos. And please comment with any questions you have about anything that I showed you today. I'm happy to share all my sources with you as well as any tips or tricks I might have for the things I put together. Hope you and your family have a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year.